redirect your attention to this article written by Marshall Shepard titled, President Biden didn't cause the winter storm, nor did Barack Obama cause Superstorm Sandy. As with most sad attempts at journalism these days, this article debunking weather modification theory starts with the same old character attacks on anyone and everyone who questions the status quo. I literally get a brain cramp having to write stuff like this. Oh, this dude literally gets brain cramps. That's definitely not normal. I guess he was an early adopter of the COVID-19 vaccine. It is utter foolishness. However, I try to find the teachable moments in all of it. <laughs> in case you haven't noticed, we are currently living in a reality in which people believe COVID-19 is planned by the government or that perfectly legitimate elections were somehow fraudulent. There are also people that believe the earth is flat, climate change is a hoax, or that contrails from airplanes are some mind-controlling ploy. Geez, where's Bigfoot when you need him? You notice how they gotta throw Bigfoot or Flat Earth into every article like some kind of mental manipulation watermark? Hey, if you believe the government has ever done anything bad, you're also a Trump supporter and you believe in lizard people. It's literally science. Even the title of this article itself is an insult. President Biden didn't create the storm? Nobody believes President Biden created the storm, Marshall. Nobody believes President Biden can create a full coherent sentence. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true international effort to pressure. Biden just signed whatever papers were thrown in front of him by his keepers to create the very obvious manufactured crisis on the Texas power grid. He's probably not even aware of what happened in Texas. I get up in the morning, look at Jill and say, where the hell are we? Shepard then explains the science behind a polar vortex, which I'll be honest, I did appreciate. I'm a girl who loves to learn. The polar vortex is a large area of low pressure and cold air that helps keep the colder air close to the poles, as seen in the diagram on the left. Often during the winter in the northern hemisphere, the polar vortex will become less stable and expand, sending cold arctic air southward over the United States with the jet stream, as seen in the diagram on the right. Simple enough to understand, but his caption beneath the diagram is where it really gets interesting. He says, I included the aforementioned information because even though there are no hidden weapons controlling our jet stream patterns, climate change, due in part to human activity, is likely altering the weather patterns. Wait, 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 wait. I want you to think about the absurdity of this statement for a moment. On one hand, he's claiming that the weather can certainly be altered by human activity. But on the other hand, he's claiming there's just absolutely no way there can be weapons that control the weather. This is a complete logical fallacy. If you believe that the weather can be altered unintentionally by human beings, you must also believe that the weather can be manipulated on purpose by human beings. You can't have it both ways, Marshall. I mean, that's just logic. Don't scientists use logic anymore? And not only is that true in theory, this has been put into practice since as early as the 1940s. In 1947, Project Cirrus was the first attempt to modify a hurricane when an airplane flew along its rain bands, dropped nearly 180 pounds of dry ice into the clouds, and caused it to change direction and eventually land near Savannah, Georgia. The public blamed the seating, lawsuits ensued, and the project was cancelled as a result. In 1967, weather was weaponized for the first time that we know of during the Vietnam War. Operation Popeye was a military cloud seeding carried out by the U.S. Air Force. The highly classified program attempted to extend the monsoon season over specific areas of the Ho Chi Minh Trail in order to disrupt North Vietnamese military supplies by softening the road surfaces and causing landslides. We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Governments have been playing with, with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now yeah, yeah, yeah. Alleged to. 1967 was 50 years ago, so I'm gonna let your imagination run wild on how far we've come with weather modification. Check out this document called Finding the Shape of Space on the U.S. Department of Defense's website. Controlling the weather is a tactic that could counter the FMV sensors. For example, in a hypothetical 2035 scenario, China is preparing for a large-scale exercise in which it intends to test several new weapon systems. It doesn't want the United States to observe events on the ground or in the air. 
To conceal the activity, China saturates the upper atmosphere with silver iodide crystals, forming a layer of cirrus clouds and effectively prevents or significantly reduces observation from space. This scenario is not far-fetched. China leads the world in its efforts to control the weather. Bill Woodley, a scientist who ran several cloud seeding experiments for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, calls China the epicenter of all weather modification activity. They're training young scientists and pilots. They've just gone crazy over there, adds Woodley. He noted that Beijing employs 32,000 people nationwide in its weather modification office and invests 100 million annually in the program. Funny how they never consider any of this as a contributing factor to climate change. No, it's all your fault. Just go out and get yourself a Prius and the world will be saved. Today's climate engineers can create wildfires, they can create rain and snowstorms, and they can even manipulate the stratosphere to cool down the Earth. Which is exactly what our buddy Bill Gates is gearing up to do. He's back a Harvard experiment called Scope X that aims to spray the stratosphere with particles in order to block out the sun and cool down the Earth's surface. Yeah, that's right. As early as next year, we're gonna be living out the plot from Snowpiercer. First, the weather changed. The deniers knew why, but they still doomed us with their lies. War made the Earth even hotter. The rice melted and all our species crashed. So the men of science tried to cool the earth to reverse the damage they had sown. Instead, they froze her to the core. Color me surprised that the propaganda machine Netflix came out with a remake of this movie just in time for their first field experiment. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly what's gonna happen, but there's a good chance considering that everything Bill Gates touches turns to shit. And then he takes that shit and he turns it into human shit water. I mean, at least he recycles, I'll give him that. Now you can believe the weather in Texas was manufactured or you could believe the globalists are just using natural weather patterns to their advantage. It doesn't actually make a difference because either way, the outcome is the same. Now that Texas has felt the wrath of the electricity gods for being the freedom-loving demons they are, we now must look for the predetermined, perfectly packaged scapegoat for this tragedy. Who's to blame? I Ah yes, capitalism. Capitalism's the enemy, obviously. Funny how the very men who straight up threatened us with this power outage and benefit quite greatly from capitalism seem to have a problem with it in its purest form. It's almost as if the real evil in this world is the globalists and every few years they just point their finger at a new ism. FYI, if you haven't figured it out by now, America does not suffer from the perils of a free market economy. America is suffering from a bastardized version of capitalism called cronyism. An economy in which business success depends on a big ol' circle jerk between business owners and government officials. You scratch my back, I murder everyone with a pension. And as you may have already guessed, this false flag attack was yet another ploy to convince the masses that they need to shift from capitalism to something called, wait for it, inclusive capitalism. There's an oxymoron. I guess this is the point in the Hegelian dialectic where the left and right come to a compromise. I could just see these psychopaths sitting at the round table coming up with this bullshit. Okay, hey guys, what do we know about the right and the left? We know that the right loves capitalism. And what do we know about the left? We know that they love being offended by not being included in shit. So how do we come to a compromise? How about anti-racist capitalism? No? Too obvious? Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Inclusive capitalism. Good one, bro. Good one, bro. If you really want to fight the elitist assholes that are oppressing you, why don't you start with maybe, I don't know, encouraging small business owners to open up and then going out and actually supporting them instead of accusing them of trying to murder your grandma might be a bit more productive than sitting at home, watching the bias sponsored news that serves their business interests and cheering on the very people who are out there literally murdering your grandma.